Let's give the liver. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Um, my name's David White. I'm a uh, contract photographer. I work three days a week for the Listener magazine. Um, I started out as a press photographer, and I still kind of regard myself as one. Um, quite often we're regarded as meatball photographers because uh, the sort of photography we get into. But anyway, um, here's a little presentation. Yeah. Um, I was just travelling down Rosebank Road uh, a couple of weeks before Christmas, a couple of years ago, and I saw a bit of a commotion going on and um, just stopped off there. It was apparently it was a sheet metal uh, place and having a Christmas party. The guy that ran the shop couldn't afford to take his blokes out on a fishing trip for, on a launch for a night, so he ended up getting strippers in. So I just sort of hung around there for a night. Oh, here we go. Um, this, is a, this is a story about the uh, Canterbury water rights issue, and I had to try and illustrate what was going on there, so the editor just said I could get a helicopter, but as long as it didn't cost any more than 500 bucks, which is about a 10 minute flight. So after about 50 telephone calls, I managed to uh, pinpoint where that sort of picture might uh, take place. This was a story about Pataru after um, New Zealand's richest man, Graham Hart, pulled out of Carterhold Harvey. It was a story about how the town was going to die. This picture was semi set up. As I turned into town, um, that couple were pashing around a corner. Um, which didn't quite look right. So, I mean, it's not, for, it's, you know, it's not the way things should be done, but it kind of worked. This was the Middlemarch um, single wins ball uh, at about 3 o'clock in the morning. Um, some lucky lady got, uh, got the right guy and some other woman didn't. Um, Uh, this was Queen Street a couple of um, a couple of months back. Uh, I don't know if anybody sort of walks up on Queen Street a lot these days, but there's quite a few homeless people uh, appearing these days. It used to be a, something you get overseas, not in Auckland. Uh, and it's just interesting capturing, you know, Aucklanders or New Zealanders' um, reactions to something that's becoming almost the norm now. Um, this was down in Ruatoki shortly after the um, the terror the Maori terrorism raids down there, and there was a lot of portraits to take of a lot of boring people, but um, in the afternoon I managed to get away, and just the local kids, it was just nice seeing, you know, in Auckland you grow up, and lots of kids these days, the parents sort of modicoddled them, and you know, don't let them do this, and don't let them do that, but down there they, um, they just do what they want. Um, this, is, this wasn't the listen, this is a short report, it was a story about Don Brash, and somebody wrote a story about how he was a bit of a puller when he was younger, and I had to try and get a picture that sort of um, portrayed that, but he had a minder there that wouldn't let me do anything, but the minder's telephone rang, and had to disappear, and Don Brash was quite new to the political scene at the time and he, he stupidly let me take that shot. This is um, Coco Solid. It's a story about the list, that the listener did about um, uh, the music industry and upcoming musicians, but they didn't want them photographed with guitars or anything else. So um, that was down in the backyard of her house. I just quite like that sort of portrait. Uh, that was Jordan Luck. When I knocked on the door in the morning, he was pretty hungover. I think he's still actually drunk. And when he opened the door, he was stark, stark naked. Um, very well endowed. Um, and he didn't get dressed for until about maybe 20 minutes after I arrived. But uh, he lives down the back of the, one of the Western, Western Springs creeks. And every morning after a, um, a night out, he goes for a swim. This is a story about tourism we're doing in Auckland City. And these were twins who'd gotten off a ship from somewhere in the States. And they just looked so alien to me that I decided to see if I could photograph them. And yeah, they just don't look like New Zealanders. But, um, but they were nice people. Uh, this is Peter McCleavy, who's a Wellington art curator who discovered people like Len Lai and a few others. Um, yeah, in his, um, in his studio. And I, I photographed him doing this and photographed him doing that and it wasn't working. And I just looked at some of the images and when I looked up again, he was looking out the window doing that. And you know, quite often, you just got to let people do what they're doing. More often than not, it works. Uh, well, this is the second half. This is a photo essay I did about a, a couple living under the Kyber Pass overbridge that I, I befriended a, about a year ago, last winter. Um, uh, yeah, it's a hard life, but they seem to enjoy it. So that's the Kyber Pass overbridge. Um, he's, yeah, every morning he goes out and collects water for um, the day's duties. Tim and his, um, his name's uh, Paul. And Yvonne, um, this sort of madly in love couple, it was a sort of weird place to sort of to set up shop. But um, you know, um, they seem to they seem to do it quite well. 
So he goes out and collects all the firewood every um, every morning along the southern motorway. You may, you may have sort of spotted him. Um, <clears throat> it's just weird. It's sort of quite sort of um, uh, post-apocalyptic, really. They sort of just go out and do the thing while the rest of Auckland sort of get on with sort of driving into town on the motorway or or driving home in the afternoon. So yeah, they've um, uh, you know, well, there's I don't know, hundred thousand cars driving over the bridge, just sort of sort of put out their washing, and they're very tidy. You know, not what you'd possibly might expect from a from a homeless couple. Um, uh, they do their washing every day. They uh, they shower every night down at the local university. I think a security guard lets them in, and a lot of the locals around the street to to sort of haven't got a, a saw to break up the firewood. He uses a uh, he uses a rock. He's not trying to squash your mouse. Um, Yvonne's sort of a fair bit younger than Paul and she's still into that sort of teen magazine sort of thing so that's pretty evident when you see you know, what's this sort of makeshift bedroom I guess. Paul puts up with it. That's uh, the cooking dinner there. Um, they're sort of sitting down to dinner now. Um, that's about 5.30 in the afternoon. It's a constant drone of motorway traffic going overhead. Uh, and it's quite cold, that was the winter, um, but they're pretty well set up. Um, they don't really get bothered by anybody. The, the police leave them alone because if they push them on, where are they going to go? Uh, and the locals um, are quite good. They help out with food. Um, it's Yvonne sort of getting ready for bed, I guess. Neither of them apparently on the dole either. They sort of, um, I don't know how they fund their lifestyle. I never I felt it right to ask, but... Um, uh, I think Yvonne's been a street kid most of her life and Paul sort of um, fell out of work here and there and just decided to live this way. That's their bedroom. Pretty well set up really. Sort of, um, It's cold but you know, it doesn't get rained on. Cheers.